All right, so whether, whether uh, you are in a relationship or not, uh, you are loved, and, uh, <laughs> and I, I, I appreciate uh, each one of you uh, being in my class and coming today. I know uh, you have a long weekend, and so it could have been easy to uh, ditch class and, uh, and said peace out, see you Wednesday, but thank you for coming. So uh, anyway, I hope uh, oh, we're, uh, we're slightly off the screen here. All right, let's, oh, something happened. Too much, okay, well. All right, that'll have to do, okay. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll, uh, we'll move on in, uh, in the wonderful world of statistics. And um, I gotta make these hearts red here. Okay, that's much better, okay. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're going to move on into chapter 7, okay? So where we left off, uh, we left off covering the normal distribution and the binomial distribution, okay? So that was distributions of random variables, okay? Uh, chapter 7 is going to cover what we call sampling distribution, so I'm going to... Uh, take a little bit of time just uh, making distinctions between sampling distributions and uh, versus kind of just distributions of random variables which we covered in uh, chapter six okay all right so uh, I guess well, first of all, we'll, uh, we'll rewind a little bit, okay? A little bit of rewind and review. Uh, we said in statistics, kind of the, uh, the big picture idea the big picture idea behind uh, the reason why we study statistics uh, big picture idea for why we study statistics is uh, is that we can use statistics to allow us to make conclusions about the population based on limited data. Okay. Okay, so, you know, I think I've drawn this picture a few times, but, uh, you know, this population is this big entity, you know, too big to observe directly. Okay, and so instead of trying to observe the population, the entire population, we just take this small little piece right here, or wherever, okay, we take a small sample out of the population. Okay, and then we, uh, we observe the sample. We observe and study. Okay, and based on what we see in the sample, we can make inferences about the population. And so, let's see. Um, so in our course, so th this is kind of the big picture idea of statistics in general. And we're going to, in our course, we're going to cover basically uh, two ways or two applications of this, of this concept of taking a sample and making conclusions about the population. We're going to learn about 
making conclusions about the uh, proportion that exists in a population. So that, that applies to categorical variables. And then we can uh, make conclusions about the, the mean or the average in the population. That, that will apply to, uh, to numeric variables, OK? So um, yeah, I guess I can write it on this slide. So OK, so in our course, and this is pretty much uh, where we are headed for the, uh, you know, the last few remaining weeks of our, of our class. It's what? The end, this is sixth week? The end is sixth week? OK, so we only have what? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I guess that's four weeks. Um, you know, we only have like a you know a full month left. Um, so in our course, we're going to pretty much spend the rest of our time covering um, uh, making conclusions or making inference inferences about the mean of a population. And that would be the um, numeric variables. And making inferences about a proportion uh, in the population. And that applies to categorical variables. OK. And, uh, and so that's, that's where we're headed. Uh, we're going to start off uh, looking at proportions and categorical variables. Once we, uh, once we cover that in detail, we'll, uh, we'll then move on to uh, means and numeric variables. OK. Okay, so if I may, I'm going to flip to the uh, the next slide. Okay, and so and let me. I want to just. Okay, so um, okay, so in the population. Okay. Maybe uh, we might uh, wish to know what the uh, uh, population proportion is. Okay, the symbol for population proportion is going to be P. Okay, this is the population proportion. Okay. Uh, to make conclusions about this proportion, which is unknown to us, about P, we will study a sample and observe the proportion in a sample. And the proportion in the sample would be p hat. OK? So for example, we can just say maybe uh, the question. So here's an example. OK? What percentage of, I don't know, voters 18 to 25 um, support. Yeah, all right, we'll do support Bernie Sanders. Okay. Okay. So this is this percentage or this proportion. What proportion? Or this is uh, the proportion in the population okay and this is unknown to us this this value is p okay so uh, to kind of get an idea of this you know we conduct a survey okay or as the news call it, calls it a poll all right 
And, and what that poll does is it's supposed to get a sample of voters that are representative of voters 18 to 25, okay? So we, uh, um, we survey a sample of, uh, you know, eight of voters 18 to 25 and, uh, and ask them, okay, and ask. And so maybe, uh, maybe you have a, so perhaps the data, so if we went to New Hampshire or something, prior to the primary, okay, maybe the data says, uh, you know, 100 people surveyed, 100 people 18 to 25 surveyed, and then, uh, I don't know what it was in New Hampshire, but it was, it was quite high for the 18 to 25 group. Um, so we'll say 81, okay? 81 uh, support Bernie. Okay, and so the P hat here would be 0.81, okay? Now, keep in mind, you only surveyed 100 people so the, the question now is, well, is this 0.81 a good estimate of this unknown value P? Okay, P being the population proportion. This is this is the, uh, the all-important question, right? You got P hat is 0.81. What is the true value of P, being a percentage of voters that support, uh, voters 18 to 25 that support Bernie, okay? This is, uh, this is what we want to know. All right, so in order for our conclusions to be valid, okay, so before we can even start to answer this question, um, there's, there's a few things, is that when we conduct our survey, we need to have obtained our uh, sample randomly, okay? So in order for any of our conclusions to be, to be valid in, in this case, our ser um, we need to have selected our, our people at random, okay? So the, uh, the sample... Now, if we only surveyed those uh, in New Hampshire, we would have to change our question to be what percentage of voters in New Hampshire, 18 to 25, okay? So this data probably, maybe if this comes from New Hampshire, then uh, our question has to be uh, in New Hampshire. Otherwise, um, otherwise this, this doesn't make any sense, right? You know. If we survey New Hampshire and then we're, uh, <laughs> the question is about Texas, it's not going to work out, okay? So, so you always, uh, it's, it's very important that we keep in mind what is the population that we're going after? Is our sample randomly selected from our population? Okay, so let's... Um, Let's talk about this concept about is you know, 0.81 a good estimate of the unknown value P, okay? So, or, uh, and so to get at that, we're gonna have to talk about this concept of a sampling distribution, okay? All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about a sampling distribution. All right, so here we have some kind of population. So, if another organization went to New Hampshire, surveyed 100 different voters, 18 to 25, and asked them, how um, do you support Bernie Sanders? Um, that other organization is not necessarily gonna get 81%, right? They could get 75%, maybe 82%. We, don't, we have no idea, okay? 
So the idea behind a sampling distribution is, um, let's say we take a population, we're gonna draw sample one, okay? So the population has proportion P, okay? Has this value, and from sample one, we get P hat one, okay? From our first sample, we're gonna get a sample proportion. So keep in mind, this is a sample proportion. This is based on, so sample proportions are based on our observations that we selected. Meanwhile, this P in the population is just a, it's a fixed value, right? This is, if we were ma managed to survey every single person in the population, then we could get P. And it, that's not gonna, not gonna change. Okay, I mean, maybe over time it, it, it's different from whatever, if people change their mind about who they're supporting, but the idea is just at some given moment, okay? So, so we have sample one, we get P1 hat. Sample two, we're gonna get another P hat. Now, this P hat is probably close, fairly close to this value, but it's not gonna be exactly the same, right? We do the same thing, we, we draw another sample, sample three. Okay, and from that sample we get another p-hat. Okay, and we just keep drawing samples over and over and over again. All of these are random samples. Do, 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 do. Okay, and we're gonna each one is gonna give us a P hat, okay? So we do this, so we, uh, we repeatedly draw uh, random samples from the population. Okay, and uh, with each sample, we calculate p hat, okay? And we're gonna keep track of every single p hat we observe. And then we're going to basically build a histogram of all of these p-hats. Okay, does this concept make sense? So we're just, we've got the big population, we can observe the population, so we're we're gonna just repeatedly take samples out of that population. From each sample, we calculate a p hat. And we're gonna do this like thousands of times, okay? So if I keep track of all the different p hats, what do you think the distribution of p hats will look like? Okay, all right, well let's, uh, let's try this out, okay? Uh, that's something else, okay. So we, got a, we have a little applet to uh, illustrate this. Okay, so here's, this is a, uh, So in our demo, what's going on is I've got a, uh, um, so I've got a big machine, okay, of, of candy here. Let me zoom out a tiny bit, okay. 
We got a big, uh, you can think of this as just this giant vat of candy. Uh, I can specify something like 30% of the candies in this machine are orange, okay? And what I'm gonna do is, uh, is we're going to uh, take random samples of 25 pieces of candy here, okay? And we're gonna count how many of those pieces are orange, okay? So Reese's Pieces, uh, they're like M&Ms, but they come in red, orange, I mean, so they come in brown, orange, and yellow. So we're gonna put all the orange pieces over here and all the yellow pieces over here, okay? So we'll, we'll draw one, okay? Oh, I need to do a proportion of orange, okay? So here I've got, uh, out of the 25 pieces, nine of them were orange, okay? And so uh, nine out of 25, does this, uh, what? Here it is. Uh, well, it just says, okay, well, where's my calculator here then? Okay, so nine out of 25, what is this? Nine divided by 25. <laughs> That's, uh, okay, so we get a proportion of 0.36, right? Okay, so let me just, uh, and I don't, <laughs> it's always funny when the calculator says, yeah. That's what you typed in, okay. So nine out of 25 is gonna be 0.36, okay. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we're gonna start building up a histogram. This is gonna be a dot plot. We're gonna put a dot every time we, uh, we draw a sample here, okay. So here we go, we're gonna do this again. Here's uh, our second sample. And here we got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of orange candy. So our proportion of orange is 0.24, okay. Let's do this again. This is exciting, right? Um, okay, we got seven pieces of orange, so our proportion, our sample P hat is 0.28, so we put a little dot right there. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just animate it one more time. Um, okay, and then here we got another sample where six of them were orange, and we got 0.24, okay? So here I've got four dots, one for each of these samples that I drew. Okay. All right, so now I can, um, uh, I'm gonna turn off the animation and, uh, and we'll just do like um, 10 at a time. Okay, so I'm gonna do 10, all right? And so here's, uh, we drew 10 more and we happen to get uh, a lot of these, okay? Um, so now I've drawn a total of 24, here's another 10, okay? And, and I'm gonna just keep uh, adding to these, okay? And so we see, you know, after 74 samples, okay, we did happen a, a few times where we only had like two orange pieces uh, that happened one time. But a lot of times we got six orange pieces, a lot of times we got eight orange pieces, seven and nine orange pieces happened quite a bit. And so these are, you know, P hats of 0 0.24, uh, 0 0.27, 0 0.28, 0 0.32, 0 0.36, These are all fairly common values of P hats that we're getting. Okay, keep in mind that in the actual vat, we know that there's 30% orange, okay? But we're drawing samples and we're just kind of seeing like, you know, whenever I take a random sample of 25, what's happening here, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just crank this up and we're gonna do 100 at a time, okay? And we'll just kind of see this thing start to build up. Okay, so at this point, you know, the, the dots are so small that they've kind of merged into lines. And, uh, you know, what is this shape looking like? It looks, uh, it looks a lot like uh, the normal, right? We're getting, uh, this is, uh, they're superimposing a normal curve on top of this. So, you know, after about 2,000 or so random samples, if we kept track of every single P hat, this thing looks a lot like the normal distribution, okay? It's not, now, it would be incorrect to say it's exactly the same as the normal distribution because the normal's continuous, and here, what, our p hats can only be um, 0.24 or 0.28 or something like that. But the shape is unimodal and symmetric, okay? But, and, uh, and so let's see, you know, occasionally we do get, you know, 0.08 as a proportion and occasionally we get 0.56 as a proportion, but that doesn't happen very often, okay? 
What would happen if instead of uh, 25 pieces of candy, what if I took 50 pieces of candy? What do you think would happen to uh, the shape of our distribution if I took 50 pieces of candy rather than 25? What's that? Yeah, I would end up getting a tighter distribution. Let's, let's just take a look at what happens, okay? So if I take 50 pieces of candy, okay, I'm gonna just do, well, let's see, it might take a while because it's gonna spit out 50 pieces of candy here. Uh, I regret my decision now. Um, okay, so here, uh, you know, it got 0.34. Um, I'm gonna just do 100, oh dear. Okay. <laughs> Disaster avoided. Averted. <laughs> okay. Um, here, let's uh, let's take a look here. Uh, okay. So you know it's built, building it up, and if we look, indeed, we hardly see. You know, um, before the range kind of went from well. Uh, if, if we look at the, the range of values we observe, the range of values is a little bit tighter. It's not drastically tighter, okay, but it is tighter. Whereas before, you know, it went from anywhere from around um, here. We can just kind of compare. We have uh, 2,000, so, so after, you know, 2,000 uh, samples, let's... Let's get our summary stats, okay? So it tells us the standard deviation of all of these uh, p hats that we observed is 0 0.09, okay? And, uh, and if I crank this up to um, 50 pieces of candy, okay, uh, the standard deviation is, is smaller at 0 0.065, okay? And we can see that if we look at the, the axis here, and maybe it's, maybe it's a little bit small for you guys to see, but I don't know how much I can fit. Um, we can see that the range is indeed smaller, okay? And, you know, if I crank this up to something like 200 pieces of candy, you know, so at 50 pieces of candy, the standard deviation is 0 0.065. At 200 pieces of candy, um, the standard deviation is a lot smaller at 0 0.033, okay? And, uh, and this is unimodal symmetric. I probably need to do, uh, do another uh, few thousand of these samples, okay? So we get something. This, this looks quite a bit look like the normal distribution, okay? Okay, this, I'd say that looks very normal. The, uh, the standard deviation is quite small at 0 0.032, okay? And we can see, you know, the, you know, most of our observations are between about, you know, 0.23 and 0.37-ish or something like that, okay? Um, okay, so let's, uh, we'll kind of formally define this a little bit, okay? So the, the point of this was to show that, you know, we can do this method of, you know, we have the population and we're repeatedly taking samples over and over and over, we're keeping track of every single one of these p hats, okay? And with the computer, this simulation is, it's, uh, it's not hard to do. Uh, and we can see that after, you know, many, many of these, we get this thing that looks like the normal distribution, okay? There is one catch though, all right? And, uh, and I wanna show you. So I'm gonna do, uh, reduce my proportion of orange to something like 2%, okay? <coughs> All right, and I, I want to just uh, we'll do uh, we'll just do two hundred of these, okay? So if I if I reduce the uh, all right, we'll we'll crank this up, okay? Um, if I have a small number of so in the vat now only two percent are orange, okay? And I'm drawing a hundred pieces of candy. This thing doesn't really look like the normal distribution, okay? And, you know, what's going on here? Well, if only 2% of the candies are orange, um, you know, kind of the most likely outcome is to have about, is to draw something around two, two pieces of orange candy in a, in a sample of 100. 
Um, and that means you know, getting one orange piece is likely and getting zero orange pieces is also quite likely. Okay? And, but on the other hand, it's quite possible to get you know, five or six or seven orange pieces of candy. You know, doesn't happen very often, but we get something like that. And so we get, end up getting something that's, you get a skewed distribution you know, when you have uh, an extremely low or an extremely high um, probability or percentage that exists in the population, okay? So in order for us to apply the normal distribution, we have um, a few, few catches, okay? Let's see. Oops, that's not the... Uh, Okay, so what was I saying? Okay, so the, uh, the sampling distribution. Of P hat, okay. Looks very much like the normal distribution. Um, and I'm going to just put a little star, and the star, the asterisk says, you know, as long as our conditions are met. Okay. So, uh, so this is, you know, the sampling distribution of p hat. Again, the sampling distribution of p hat is the distribution of all the different. P hats that we observed. Okay, so maybe I'll just write that. Uh, it's technically is the theoretic distribution. Of all the possible sample proportions p hats that we can observe. Okay. So, uh, you know, the sampling distribution Uh, will be approximated with the normal distribution. So, so we're gonna, you know, at this point we're gonna just say, you know, uh, if we've got 30% orange candies and uh, and let's just crank up, we're gonna do, we're gonna have this thing. We're gonna just say, okay, um, you know, even though. It's not continuous. We're going to just approximate this with the normal distribution. It looks pretty, pretty much like the normal distribution. We're going to approximate it with the normal distribution. Okay. So the sampling distribution will be approximated with the normal distribution. Okay. All normal distributions need two values. What are they? Yeah. So uh, the mean is going to be equal to this, and the standard deviation is going to be equal to something else. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe I'll put a, a side clicker question here. Let me. Uh, where can I do this? All right. So this is. Uh, Okay, so you know the mean of the, our sampling distribution is okay A, B, C, D. Okay, um, so the sampling distribution of I guess P hat, right? Is do 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 do. do. Okay, so your choices are P 
hat, p, n times p hat, and n times p. Let me, uh, let me fire this up. What's going on? Okay, so go ahead and try that, and I'll put this here. See if that that helps you. So, so what do you think the mean of our sampling distribution is? Okay, so keep in mind what we have in the population. Okay. And this is essentially what our sampling distribution looks like. What do you think the, uh, the mean of our sampling distribution is? Okay, It's the sampling distribution of p hat. Okay, So whenever we take samples of, does this question make sense? Kind of? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I guess it's, I'll, I'll, I'll explain this. I just, I wanted this to be, a, you know, a little bit of a, a thinking problem here, okay? So, so keep in mind, right, we're taking a sample out of the population. From that sample, we're getting a p hat, okay? We're going to do this many, many, many times, getting many different p hats. If I keep track of all of those p hats, and I take the mean of all of those, which is essentially the mean of our sampling distribution, what is that mean going to be? So all of those p hats, I'm keeping track of all of them, and I take the mean, what is the mean of all of those p hats going to be? So just think. I'll be nice with the other questions, okay? <laughs> but this one's going to be the hard one. Okay, uh, so we'll stop. I'm going to click stop and uh, so just click something here. All right, let's see what let's see what you guys picked. Okay, and the answer is indeed B. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at what what we have going on here. All right, so. What, what is P? P represents the proportion that exists in the population. So in our case, um, you know, P is equal to 0.3. This is the proportion in the population that is orange. Okay. Now, all of the p hats, okay, every sample produces a different p hat, okay, or produces its own p hat. Not, not necessarily different, but produces its own p hat, okay? Those p hats, if we look at this, here's kind of our sampling distribution here. What happened? Okay, these, um, what we see is that sometimes the p hat is, you know, 0.32, sometimes the p hat is 0.25, sometimes the p hat is 0.30. Um, if we keep track of all of those different p hats, you know, and we ask for the mean, what's the mean? The mean's the balancing point, right? What, where's the balance point of this thing? It's going to be right here, right here in the, in the middle. And this location is 0 0.30, okay? The mean of all of these p hats the mean of all the p hats we uh, we observe is 0 0.30, okay? Which is equal to p, okay? And what that means is the mean of our sampling distribution 
is going to be that value p, the proportion that exists in the population. OK? Conceptually, does that kind of make sense? All right. So if the proportion is 30% orange, every time you take a random sample out of that population, I'm sorry, if the population is 30% orange, every time you take a random sample out of that population, you're going to get something around 30% orange, maybe a little higher, maybe a little bit lower. But if, we kept, if you did this over and over and over again and kept track of all those p hats, the average of all of those things will be 30% or something very, very close to that. Okay, so that's, um, that's what we have. Okay, so the sampling distribution will be approximated with the normal distribution, okay, with uh, mean equal to p, okay, the population proportion. Okay, and the standard deviation is going to be equal, and I'm just going to give this to you. I'm not going to say, like, what do you think it's going to be? Come up with this on your own. Um, is going to be this quantity, p times 1 minus p over n, where n is our sample size, okay? And this is, uh, and we're going to take the square root of this. That's our, the standard deviation of our normal distribution here. OK, let's, um, let's try this out then. All right, so here's, uh, we'll do a clicker question here. Uh, we'll say uh, we have a, in the giant vat of candy, OK, we'll say uh, point 0.2 of the candies uh, are blue, OK? Uh, we will take random samples of 100. OK? Um, and, you know, and, uh, takes, uh, and make a sampling distribution of p hat. So the sampling distribution will have a mean of 0.2 and a standard deviation of dot, 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 dot. OK. And your answer choices will be uh, 0.02, 0.0. .0, 0 4.16. Well, actually, <laughs> I better do the math myself and make sure I have the correct answer choice available here. Okay, and uh, 0.05. Okay, all right. So we'll uh, so try that. Anybody doing anything special this weekend? Statistics. Yeah, that's right. Statistics. That's what I'll be doing. <laughs> huh? Your one true love? My no, that's not true. <laughs> I have a <laughs> Okay, uh, just, just click something on your uh, clicker, please. <laughs> well, we're going to run out of time, so. What are you doing? 
I don't know, uh... <laughs> statistics. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> all right, Ari, are we ready? Is that, is that all of you 125? Okay. Um, yes, the answer is B. Okay, so yeah, um, you know, P is equal to 0.2, N is equal to 100, so our standard deviation is going to be uh, um, P times 1 minus P divided by 100, so we get square root of 0.16 over 100.04. Okay, all right, well, have a wonderful weekend. We will see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy your uh, extra holiday. Say, uh, tell someone you appreciate and love them. <laughs> <laughs>